ready for roll call. Certainly are. Council Member Kelly. Present. And Council Member Turner is absent tonight. And Council Member Perkins. Here. Council Member Mendoza. Here. Council Member Best. Here. Vice Mayor Miller. Here. And Mayor Croft. Here. We have a quorum. And we have our attorney, Andrew McGuire, on the phone and the screen. I'm on. Everybody's on. Everybody's quiet. I'm on. No, be closer, I guess. Can you guys hear us okay out there? <laughs> okay. Everybody have their mics on so we can hear them. Okay. Introductions, presentations, and proclamations. We have none. Let's go on to call to the public. Call to the public is an opportunity for a public ad to address the council on any issue within the jurisdiction of the council that is not on the agenda. Public comment is encouraged. Individuals are limited to speak for three minutes. Total time for calls to the public may be up to 30 minutes per meeting. Council action taken as a result of public comment will be limited directing staff to study the matter, scheduling the matter for further consideration and decision at a later date or responding to criticism. Do we have anybody that would like to speak this evening? Yes. Come on up. Uden, Uden, this is YRT train. Yeah. The bus. My name is Ron Romley. I'm a resident here in Chino Valley. And I come in front of you tonight uh, to find out the Paulden Plunge uh, project that we did for 2019. Uh, this year, the Paulden Plunge was another huge success. We transported just under 400 kids. We did something a little bit different though because the Boys and Girls Club opened up uh, <coughs> right next door. Uh, we made arrangements that we transported uh, the kids to the Boys and Girls Club. Now they're not part of the Paul and Plunge program so they had to pay 50 cents to take a ride into, uh, into Chino Valley. But they're in the same parking lot so we just couldn't say no. Uh, once again, once again uh, the town of Chino Valley provided Yavapai Regional Transit $1,700 to help defray the cost of the bus. Our actual cost to run the bus for two months was approximately $1,755. For the second year in a row, the Kiwanis Club of Prescott uh, donated $1,500 for the kids in, uh, to enter into the pool. So if any of you know anybody from the Kiwanis Club of Prescott, thank them. Again, the program would not happen if it wasn't for the Paulden Foundation. They are the ones that schedule the kids. They take all the uh, uh, stuff and uh, uh, a report and give it to us at every single bus stop that we sp stop and pick up kids. So we have their names, their, their parents' names, their phone numbers in case something happens that uh, there's been a change or the pool shuts down. Then we call the parents to tell them they're coming home early. I also want to thank Councilman Best uh, who has volunteered for the last four years uh, with us on, uh, on with YRT. He is a certified driver. He drives during uh, the other months. So it's not that he uh, just wants to do it, it's, but he does want to do it. He and I volunteered to run the system uh, for those two months going into Paulden uh, because it's a cost savings uh, for the entire program. We also want to thank various members of the town staff and other businesses and people for all their donations towards the program. Hopefully, we'll be able to continue this again next year. With that being said, I'd like to present Mayor Croft with a check for $1,309, and I want to thank the council for all your support. I'd like to thank Ron and his crew for all the things they do uh, for our bus service here, for all the folks that ride the buses. It's a very valuable service, especially for the Paulden Plunge that bring kids into the pool in the summer. That's really a great program. Thank you, Ron. Okay, anybody <laughs> else that would like to come on down, please. Give us your name. Hi, it's Chris Foley. And I have a um, question and comment. 
on the videos um, that I was trying to see and listen to over the last week from the P&Z and the town council meetings, they're barely audible. I, I've got my volume turned up all the way. I've got YouTube turned up all the way. And I'm just wondering, does anyone else have that problem or is it I just had the same and I problem. don't know what I'm doing? Yeah. Okay, so can the P&Z and town council, it sounds like maybe whoever's doing the recording doesn't have it up loud enough if everyone else is having we, a problem. We, we will check and try to yeah. do something with it. I mean, and, and really, if you can repost the P&Z meeting from October 1st, I mean, you, you can't barely hear okay, a word. Okay, thank you. We yeah. will take some kind of action. All right, anyone else? Yes, sir? My name's Ryan Roberts. I'm a, I live here in the town. Um, I had some questions about your guys' ideas of the industrial park that you guys are planning on uh, putting some money towards out Perkinsville. My biggest concern is, uh, once again, like traffic. I think everybody here tonight is worried about traffic of another project. So I think by putting a big industrial park that might employ, I mean, if it employed 300 people, they'd all drive down Perkinsville every morning. <laughs> So I, I think the traffic would be terrible, but also like, does the town have assured water supply for this development? And you know, like when you guys have first talked about it, it was like a million dollar investment. You were gonna try to get some lots started, but like last last meeting, it was starting to look more like 10 million. <laughs> like everything was, I mean, it was 700,000 just to get gas out there. So my, my concern is that we're paying a whole lot of money out of the town to, to start this this project that I, I, I don't think is going to go anywhere. Um, there's a lot of commercial property out there right next to it for sale. And I got to think if, if I was going to build a multi million dollar building to employ people, I'd want to own the land. So I had the investment, the real estate investment. So, I mean, the commercial land that's already out there seems to me to be the first to be bought before people just built a building on your guys's land and possibly lose it in 20 years. So, I, I just I think it's going to squander a lot of money, and I don't see I don't see anybody investing millions of dollars in a building to lease it back for 20 years and have the possibility of losing the lease. Um, and I think you'll have a crowd twice this size complaining about traffic down Perkinsville before anything got built. <laughs> but I, I just I had questions about that. I had you know just you know has there been any studies done on if this thing's even going to help the town? I mean. That's a huge investment, and the amount of sales that would have to come out of that just to reimburse the town for such a large investment would be astronomical. But um, I don't know. I, I think it's a huge mistake. <laughs> but I had that question, and, and just the assured water supply, certainly uh, assured water supply for that development would take more than a regular house subdivision. It's going to have more people in it. But I don't know. If you guys have Okay, we can't respond that. to that. We will have a response for you next council meeting. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Okay, let's go on to response to the public. Response to the public is an opportunity for the mayor to inform the public about how town officials address matters raised during call to the public at a previous meeting. The first item is comments in, op in opposition to proposed Brooks Apartment Plant Air Development. Uh, this evening it's on the council agenda and it will be covered then. The second one is comments regarding proposed amendments to temporary sign regulations and United uh, Unified Development Ordinance. The town council had a study session on 10 15 19 to address the language for temporary signs. Direction was given to staff regarding appropriate language. This should be at the council's 10 19 study session for council review. Then go on to P and Z and back to the council for a final adoption. We hope to have this accomplished by year's end. Mayor, it's the November nineteenth, not the October nineteenth. Pardon? It's eleven it's nineteen is November nineteenth. Yeah, Did I say ten? Yeah. <sighs> That's what happens when you get old. You forget <laughs> what month you're in. Okay, eleven nineteen, November nineteenth. Thank you, town manager. Improving a, and, and the fourth one is request for council support of citizens' effort to improve the town's 9-11 memorial at the shooting range. 
Uh, improvement of the 9-11 Memorial. We appreciate our citizens' effort to improve the 9-11 Memorial shooting range. Chief Wynn, with you, our police chief, will be coordinating the efforts and we'll keep council appraised of the progress. Thank you for your time and efforts. And we will be working on that in the future. Thank you very much. <coughs> Current events, summaries, and reports. This item is for information only. The mayor and any council member or town manager may present a brief summary or report of current events. If listed below, they may also be a presentation on information requested by the mayor and council, and questions may be answered. No action will be taken. Does anyone have anyone? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I'm super excited. Um, our Chena Valley High School boys and girls soccer teams are both vying for the state championship again this year. Good. Yes, it's huge. Um, I was fortunate enough my son played for four years, um, and three of those were state championship. No, four were state championship years. Um, the girls start Tuesday night at 6 o'clock here home in Chino Valley. Um, the semifinals, we're hosting the game, and they could use all the support they can get. Our stands are empty all the time. So if you're not doing anything Tuesday, I will be here. <coughs> so please come out and support them. They, um, I'm very proud of our soccer program here from three years old on up. What time, Annie? Six o'clock. Thank you. Is that the high school? Yes. Go, Chino. How about I'm the boys? When they the boys are away from here on up. They're away yep. from here. Okay. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Yes. Uh, briefly. Those of you that have been in town here may have noticed that on uh, National Flag Days, we run the American flags down Highway 89. Uh, we had a little problem with the state, and uh, we're, they're going to have a hearing here Thursday at 1 p.m. in the afternoon with the Northern Arizona ADOT person to explain why they told us we could no longer put the flags up. Anybody that might be interested? Is there be in the council chamber? But that Great. wasn't, I don't think that's a like a public meeting. I think that was with ADOT staff. Oh, so. okay. Well, you're going to have a hell of a lot of people here, I'll tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> the, I believe the people like those flags. Yeah, yeah I know that. <laughs> we, got a, we, got a bunch of, we got a bunch of vets uh, wound up. Uh, we're going to have a bunch of vets here, right? One o'clock. The number's the 24th, day after tomorrow. Okay. Short enough. Anything else? Can Town I manager. Sure. I have a couple items, please, <coughs> Mayor and Council. Thank you. Uh, first off, um, our clerk has asked me to announce that we're accepting applications for our Planning and Zoning Commission and the Municipal Property Corporation through October 30th. Contact the clerk's office, Jamie Lewis, for more information. Can you hear me through this? Not really. Yeah, I feel like it's not projecting. Uh, secondly, we have a study session, as Council Member Perkins mentioned, on Tuesday evening, 1029. Uh, that is to address some items that we have pushed off because of other items that came up, uh, such as a sign code. Um, so there's a handful of items. We're going to start at 5 p.m., just FYI. Uh, number three, uh, I wanted to let you know that you received a thank you from the president of the Chino Valley Pickleball Association for um, allowing the courts to go in here at Chino Valley, so thank you for that. You also received a thank you from Jeff Frohawk on uh, your efforts with uh, what they're doing for the community theater thing here. And then next I have, uh, Jamie, can you put up the slide for the customer service stuff? Uh, in the month of October is customer service, and we kind of do a big push for our employees on customer service things because that is our primary function is customer service. And although we often get criticized by the public, I think our employees do a pretty stand-up job of trying to be responsive to our public. So uh, one of the things we do is ask our fellow employees to put in nominations for their fellow peers to say something that they did that was for good customer service. So. Jamie, could you put up the next slide, please? These are the people that were nominated on the left-hand side and on the uh, right-hand side are the people that nominated them. So um, out of those people, then we just do a random drawing and do a little pick on who got the highest one or who uh, won. And so Richard Colley is here. He is our bailiff at the court. And he had nominated Kathy Parker from the court, and they are the ones that won. And his story was about her outstanding customer service in the court. 
where they tend to meet with a lot of people who are not happy to be at the court, but she maintains her digni dignity, professionalism, <laughs> and friendliness in the f face of such people who require a high level of customer service. So he uh, actually wrote a whole paragraph here about how incredible she is, but uh, we just wanted to honor Kathy as well as Richard and thank him for putting in the nomination and thank Kathy for her efforts over in the court. So we have a small gift for them that we're doing in front of the council. Our theme this year was Every Experience Counts, so they have uh, little cell phone holders plus a little gift. So. Richard, if you want to come up, and Kathy's here too. Okay. Thank you, Richard and Kathy. Thank you, guys. That's it. That's it. Okay. Thank you. Let's go on the consent agenda. Well, let's go on down. We got a couple more here. Mm -hmm. Recognition of outstanding uh, report regarding billing permit and code compliance statistics and unified development ordinance. Mr. Cook, please come up and enlighten us. Make sure you turn your timer on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I only have one slide. <laughs> <laughs> one after the other, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. No, it's the next one that has multiple slides. Um, the basic statistics for the uh, past quarter are as follows. Uh, total residential permits that we've issued is 104 to date. Total commercial permits has been 10. Total valuation of all projects that uh, have received a permit is five, uh, almost $5.9 million. Uh, total number of citations we've issued uh, in the last quarter is 11. Uh, total number of code uh, cases that we have opened are 109. Uh, we've held two neighborhood meetings. We've made two UDO amendment updates. Uh, there have been uh, two rezonings, five lot splits, five site plan reviews. Um, engineering driveway permits, one. I don't have uh, engineering grading permits, uh, that number. I left it zero. And we've issued 10 signed permits. Any questions? Anyone? Questions? No. Thank you, Josh. You're good, sir. All right. Let's go on with consent agenda. All those items listed below are considered to be routine and may be enacted by one motion. Any council member may request to remove an item from the consent agenda to be considered and discussed separately. Do you want to pull anything on this side? You want me? Mm -hmm. We're good. This side? All right, I need a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll make a motion we pr approve the consent agenda, item 6A, B, C, D, and E as written. Is there second a second? It? Uh, I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 The consent agenda is approved. Let's go on to action items. The council may vote to recess the public meeting and hold an executive session on any item on this agenda pursuant to ARS 38-431-03A3 for the purpose of discussion or consultation for legal advice with the town attorney. Executive sessions are not open to the public and no action may be taken in executive session. And I'm sure that most of you are here for this item is consideration possible action to rezone approximately 6.85 acres of real property from MR1 multifamily residential one acre minimum zoning district to MR1 PAD multifamily family a residential one acre minimum zoning district with a planned area development overlay. The project proposes 152 units and four step two to three story structures. The property is generally located 1400 feet west of State Route 89 and 620 feet south of the assessor parcel number 30623024C. And that'll be Mr. Cook coming up and making a presentation. And I'm going to read. I'm going to read our procedures that we're going to take tonight to, uh, to go through this process. A town council meeting is an open meeting for discussion between staff and town council concerning the items listed on the agenda for that meeting. I will read the agenda item, and I already have, and staff members will make their presentation to council with staff council decision. At the completion of staff council decision, members of the audience may be heard. 
Audience comments are limited to 30 <coughs> minutes total time, three minutes per person. When you come to the podium, please state your name and stick to your three minute time period to allow other audience members to speak. Remember the council members have already received letters and comments concerning this zoning issue. This is a business meeting. It will be conducted as such. No applause, grandstanding, or personal attacks will be allowed. I will shut down audience comments and go directly to council vote on this item if these rules are not followed. Council members may ask for an explanation or further discussion with staff or audience members. At the completion of the discussion, in order to bring this agenda item to the floor for a vote, I will ask for a motion to approve this item. If there is a motion and a second to that motion, I will ask for a roll call vote. Each council member may vote and may provide a reason why they voted yay to approve the zoning or nay to disapprove the zoning. Any questions? Thank you. We will conduct this as a business meeting. It will not be a circus like I've seen before. Okay. Continue. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the project before you is uh, Brook Apartments PAD. Um, as mentioned in um, the statement you read, it's located approximately a quarter mile west of uh, 89 and about 600 feet south of uh, Road 2, Road 2 North. Uh, the property is accessed um, by Hawks Nest Trail, which is a legal right-of-way through a commercial subdivision uh, called Heritage Place. On this slide, you can see multiple other different uh, developments that are uh, around. Uh, there's Heritage Place to the north. Uh, you have Chino Grove subdivision to the south. You have a pie title to the, the east. Walgreens, Safeway, Dollar General, and Pepper Jacks are all to the, the east. Um, property description uh, is uh, on this slide. Um, the actual site address is 740 West, Road 1 North. Uh, it's approximately 6.85 acres. Uh, the general plan designation for this is commercial, multifamily, residential, and <coughs> uh, within the potential community core. Uh, the existing zoning is MR1, which is multifamily. Uh, surrounding zoning, you have uh, commercial light to the north. You have uh, small density uh, or uh, large density residential to the north with the SR 0 0.16. You also have MR1 PAD to the north, uh, commercial heavy and commercial light to the, to the east. Uh, large lot, uh, single family residential to the south and to the west. You also have some pockets of commercial um, to the west right here and um, a little to the south. On August 10th, 2006, through ordinance number 06668, council approved blended zoning to MR1 SR2. Uh, in November 22nd of the same year, uh, action was taken to split the blended zoning into two separate parcels. On July 3rd, 2017 staff recommended approval while the Planning Commission recommended denial of uh, a similar request requesting 199 units um, also to MR1 PAD. The intent of the PAD overlay was to increase the density from approximately 99 units to 192 units at the time. Uh, the applicant, however, uh, withdrew the application before Town Council um, met on it. Let me move his picture back. Uh, this is a uh, copy of the site plan. Uh, the blue outline on the site plan uh, illustrates uh, existing setbacks on the property, um, which development would be required to meet. Basically 10 feet on the south, 20 feet on the north, <coughs> east, and west uh, property lines. There's a pr they're proposing four buildings. Um, of those four buildings, there's going to be portions of two-story and portions of three-story. Uh, their proposal is four four-bedroom, four three-bedroom, 21 two-bedroom, and nine one-bedroom per building. The uh, four-bedroom four and the three-bedroom are on the wings in the two-story sections. Uh, this is an elevation of uh, what they are proposing to construct. Um, you can see that there is some visual interest there. They have uh, varied the heights, uh, and um, there's no balconies. Uh, that's a artist rendering. Um, some of the amenities that they're proposing uh, are increased setbacks. Um, there's going to be a, me a meandering multi-use path around the property on the outside. 
Uh, there's going to be exercise stations, um, gazebos with uh, seating area and barbecue pits here and, and there, um, uh, and then a park area, which is also going to double as their, their retention area. There was some mention at the Planning Commission that the uh, Planning Commission wanted a dog park. Uh, the uh, applicant has mentioned that they're amenable to that, uh, that, they would, uh, that they would provide that in, in this area as well. Um, the applicant can speak more to that. Um, this is a uh, table which illustrates uh, the existing code standards for MR1, and it's comparing it to what the applicant is proposing. Uh, the existing MR1 standards on the site would allow 99 units, uh, which would accommodate, uh, that's approximately 14.5 dwelling units per acre. 40% um, lot coverage is, is allowed in the MR1 zoning currently. And the uh, setbacks, as I mentioned, are 20, 10, um, 10 and 20. Um, the applicant is proposing 152 units, which is approximately 22.5 dwelling units per acre. Uh, maximum lot coverage will only be 20%. Um, maximum building height is 35 feet, which is what they're proposing. And the setbacks uh, on the front side would be 20 feet. On the right side would range from 100 to 165 feet. Setbacks on the, uh, the left side or the west would be 44 feet to 90, 98 feet. And then the rear setback would be approximately 85 feet. Uh, landscaping requirements as well. For uh, MR1, they're required one tree for every 20 feet, linear feet, uh, where the buffer is located, with, and this would account for approximately 144 trees. Uh, they're also required to provide four shrubs per 400 square feet of that, that buffer, uh, which would uh, you know, equate to approximately 115 shrubs. What they're proposing is 233 trees and 740 shrubs. Uh, they're also, oops, they're also uh, proposing um, some screening with uh, block wall and uh, they're, um, they're proposing to repair the fence along the west side uh, as requested by the property owner. Parking requirements uh, would be 184 for uh, the MR1 zoning for a density of 99 units uh, as opposed to 287 for the 152 density. This is just further illustration of, of the setbacks. Uh, also, I've included a uh, definition of lot coverage on the bottom because there is some question we've heard um, that lot coverage also includes asphalt uh, and curbing and things like that. It does not. According to the definitions of our code, uh, lot coverage is only that portion of a lot or building site which is occupied by any building or structure except paved areas, walks, and swimming pools. Um, this slide just shows uh, other developments um, that are proposed that have not been constructed yet and, and what their densities would be. Hawks Nest is a planned area development uh, which would accommodate 224 units uh, in two phases uh, over 15 acres right here. They were proposing 64 one bedroom and 162 bedroom. Um, Village North planned area development is uh, this property right here. It's behind Safeway. And they were approved for 156 units in three phases on nine acres. Uh, 28 one bedroom, 102 bedroom, 28 three bedroom for 156 total units. Uh, town followed legal process. We have notified uh, those res residences uh, in accordance with uh, Arizona state statute and our code uh, in the 300 foot radius. This resulted in 17 letters to surrounding properties. During the past few months, several property owners have spoken to staff regarding the project, and we have forwarded all correspondence we have received <coughs> to Planning Commission and Council as they have come in. Uh, staff also provided the Council uh, with uh, an interpretation letter which spoke to some of the issues that were, were brought up in those letters. A uh, neighborhood meeting was held uh, on August 26, 2019. We did notify the residents according to the legal requirements approximately 21 residents attended the plan zoning and the planning and zoning meeting was held October 1st of this month um, it was scheduled to be held in September but because of an issue uh, staff made a mistake on the property notification and, and because of that we uh, asked for a continuance to October so that we could meet legal requirements 
the planning and zoning uh, made a uh, recommendation for denial um, of the project and that vote was four to three. Staff, however, is uh, forwarding a recommendation of approval uh, with seven stipulations. As of the planning commission meeting, uh, those stipulations were in draft form. Um, however, uh, since that time, staff has sat down uh, with the applicant along with uh, the public works director and legal counsel, and uh, the stipulations that are attached are in their final version. Uh, so therefore, staff recommends uh, forwards a recommendation of approval to town council to adopt ordinance 2019-873, rezoning approximately 6.85 acres of real property uh, from the MR1 multifamily residential one acre minimum zoning district to the MR1 PAD multifamily residential one acre minimum zoning district with a planned area development overlay with its associated development plan with the following conditions. Did you want me to read those or? Yeah. Okay. Number one, the project shall substantially conform to the site plan, landscape plan, conceptual building elevations, and other exhibits provided by the applicant as modified by staff's recommended conditions contained herein. Number two, developers shall provide a 54-inch CMU block wall along the southern property line. Developers shall align and reinforce existing fence along the west property line per prior discussions with Ms. Ms. Chris Foley. Number three, depths of flows over on-site and off-site streets shall not exceed one foot to allow passage of emergency vehicles. The standard applies to both public and private streets. One, uh, number four, one five-foot concrete pedestrian sidewalk on-site and off-site shall, from the project going north to road to north within the existing Hawks Nest right-of-way, shall be constructed by the developer prior to issuance of any certificate of occupancy required to the property. Number five, Hawks Nest Trail shall be constructed to commercial standards, 28-foot road width, roadway width with curb and gutter and a five-foot concrete sidewalk on one side with associated ramps and other devices. The roadway design and associated curb profile may be adjusted as needed to accommodate stormwater by utilizing low water crossing provided. Final design shall be approved by the town engineer. Town shall provide full support for a reimbursement agreement with owners of Heritage Place <coughs> commercial subdivision relating to the reimbursement by owners of lots within the Heritage Place commercial subdivision to developer for costs incurred to construct Hawks Nest Trail improvements to commercial standards. Number six, Intersection improvements at Hawks Nest Trail and Road 2 North shall be constructed in accordance with the existing traffic study match, road construction type, and, mat and materials existing on similar improved segments, widened roads, curb, gutter, and sidewalk of West Road 2 North. Final design of the intersection improvements shall be approved by the town engineer. And number seven, water and sewer mains on Road 2 North through the Hawks Nest intersection shall be 12 inches in diameter. Town will provide support for a line extension agreement which causes reimbursement to developer for installation of the 12 inch lines from future hookups of property benefiting from the upsized water and sewer lines. Alternatively, the town may directly reimburse the developer for the cost of upsizing the lines from eight inches to 12 inches in diameter. If you have any questions, I can answer them now. Okay, let's go to this side. Questions? No questions. Questions? I need a minute. Sure, go. No, I meant before I'm ready to ask questions. Okay, this side. I do, but I just need a minute. Okay, we'll take a minute, and we'll get back to you. Okay. Could you go back to the previous slide, please? Number six, intersection improvements at Hawks Nest Trail and Road 2 North <coughs> shall be constructed in accordance with the existing traffic study match. Okay. What's the approximate feet that we're talking about there as far as the uh, improvements of the intersection? If I can defer that to Frank. Public Works Director. Would it be any good to pass this out to the commission? No, not at all. <coughs> good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, the improvements at 2 North we're looking at will likely uh, be a left turn lane coming into the road leading to the apartments. Is that what you're asking? That is um, that is a very valid valid point, um, and, the and that would be before a certificate of occupancy would be issued. I would assume so because it's got to be done to get the project in, and the exact length of that lane is uh, I don't have that with me, but that's based on the traffic study of how many cars will be queuing up and 
based on projections. So any widening or turn lanes there are based on the, the traffic impact analysis that's, I'm not sure if that's been completed yet, is my only hesitation there. We want to make sure it's final and double check everything, but it, it's, I'm almost positive that it'll be a left turn lane going into there. To my understanding, Josh, has the traffic impact analysis been done? Has it been, has it been completed? Yes. Do you want to speak to that? I just want to make sure that <coughs> I'm I, I I'm always hesitant to, to right. say that without the document in front of me. But I, I'm unaware that it's been completed. That's why I was wondering if there was. Yeah, let me, if I can, put the engineer on the spot. That's been completed for the full build-out, right? Yeah, so for the full, the previous... 199 units, the 192 units, that study's been completed and there's also been a town study that looked at all of the development in aggregate of not only those apartments but the other developments on both sides of two north on either side of the highway. So there's so two, the two studies that are done. Okay, so the inclusion of the left turn lane is based on the this study that's on this been development done. by itself, and it is a requirement of this developer. Yes. yes. Thank you. Is that it? That's all I have. Oh, uh, one more thing: the walkways throughout are those concrete? Um, I would refer that question to the developer. Okay, developer, come on up. Mr. Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Council Members. Uh, yes, the walkway is all fully accessible. Um, there's also a path and a trail through there, and I believe the path is going to be a decomposed granite, but will be it will be maintained and kept to accessibility standards, along with the concrete. There is concrete walkways all through the project that are fully accessible and throughout the project. And your the drainage basins, I see... Where'd the map go? It'd be at the south end of the property? <coughs> if I, I don't have the slide in front of me. Hold on. North, uh, it's at the north end. Yes. Nope. Oh, back one. Oh. Whoa. Oh, sorry. Going crazy on me. It's right there. Okay, so that's the detention. Was there one more that I saw, or no? Just that one. I think there was one There's a here. little one on the right-hand side, on the east side of the property, north property line. There's a small one there. Okay. And that's for water retention, correct? That's correct. Thank you. I'm I'm done. Corey, any? Mike. The developer's name was Chris Fergus. <laughs> oh, architect. I apologize. I just have one question that is, uh, I see all this housing and what have you. I see nothing for kids. I can't have a four-bedroom house and not have kids. A three-bedroom house, and I expect there's going to be kids someplace. Uh, I see nothing in this development that would go ahead and be a place for toddlers, for children, to go ahead and expend all their energy. I see nothing that would go ahead and be designated as a uh, playroom or a video room or something for kids to go ahead and expend their activity. And the other question I have, the first thing we ha had a six foot wall and now we have a 54 inch wall. Why the dropping on the wall? Um, that would be a question I would defer again to the applicant. All right. I just, there's just things I have that uh, stress me as a family man why you wouldn't have some place for kids to go ahead and go outside and run a basketball court or something. Come on up again. You might as well stand up here until all the <laughs> questions are asked. Yeah. The, as far as playground, I know we had discussions with uh, staff regarding a playground. There's some real insurance and liability issues with a playground. We did talk about, I know there are parks in close proximity. At one point, we did offer to contribute to the, uh, and we were accused of trying to bribe somebody, we did offer to contribute to your park system to, because, uh, to, to help improve 
uh, some of the local park or park nearby. Um, we just felt like it is a huge liability. I know there's a lot of apartment complexes that are steering away from playgrounds. Uh, we, we do have places within the building. There's been places where the previous design had video rooms, a computer room, uh, uh, a Wii room for interactive, interactive uh, activities. Um, but they're not shown, they're not in the site plan. They were shown inside the buildings. And they were conditioned spaces within the buildings, right near the stairwells, actually. And the shortening of the wall? I'm not sure where that came from. Honestly, okay. Uh, the w it was a six-foot-high wall. I don't know. That's did what the, the first plan started. Then when the owner change that, or yeah, he requested did he want a, a lower wall? And I think it had to do with engineering reasons, but I, th I'm not sure. But you know, if if somebody wants a six-foot wall, I mean, if I, I have kids with no. I, place I certainly to play, don't. I certainly don't have a problem with it. I mean, if I right. have kids that with no way to burn up energy, that little bitty wall is not going to slow them down. Yeah. Well, I don't even, are we required a wall at all? I, I believe we're not, we're, that, that uh, zoning doesn't require a wall there. We did put a wall there so it would provide some separation uh, from, from us and the neighbors and also a, a big landscape buffer there and, and you know, double the trees and, I mean, we, and set the building far away and, and no exposed, no open balconies, no open stairs, no open quarters so it was quieter. <coughs> We did try and take a lot of that into consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Uh, I would like Chief, Chief Fry Tech, could you come up, please? Dun, dun, dun. We're going to make him earn his money tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're totally prepared, prepared for this, but. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> in the past, uh, listening call to publics and all, there was a lot of concern over the one way in, one way out form of egress. And I know that you guys reviewed that. And could mm -hmm. you address that, please? So I can address that in two ways. Okay. Uh, so first and foremost, Mr. Mayor, Council, I appreciate the opportunity. Scott Freitag, Fire Chief, Central Arizona Fire and Medical Authority. Technically, the project meets the letter of the code which allows for a uh, single means of ingress, egress, uh, as long as all of the uh, buildings themselves are sprinklered. Um, from a fire service perspective outside of the code, that's always a concern for us, especially when it's going through another commercial residential property. Um, that can create some challenges uh, in the future, but the, the reality is it meets the black and white letter of the code at this time. And the, I, I did talk to prevention uh, when I walked in here and saw what was going on. I went back out and called them um, they, because I was concerned with the plot plan and whether our apparatus could, could get around in there. And I was assured that they did check the widths of all the roadways, and the roadways will allow uh, our apparatus to maneuver throughout the property. Cool. Thank you very much. And you have ladders that will reach the top of a three-story building? Yes, here? sir. Thank you. We can get anywhere. All right. Any other questions of Chief? Yeah. Uh, I have one more question. Uh, on your water system, who's providing water and is there fire protection besides sprinklers? Uh, the, the town will be providing water and sewer and we have sufficient capacity to meet those needs. Okay. I didn't know who was provide, providing the water for it. That's all. Should be town of Chino Valley. Thank you. Thank you, Chief, for your comments. Oh. Anyone else? One more question. Sure. If, can I get a school bus in there? If I got kids in there, are we going to have school bus picking up, or they have to go out on the street and wait? Uh, you can fit a school bus in there if you can get a fire truck in there. Okay. I just wondered about having a place for us pick up kids. Fit or planned? That's. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. Go right ahead. But go that's ahead. that's go kind ahead. of a big deal. Is there a planned area? We have gone over this before. Um, with other apartments. I'm hearing complexes. from Chris Fergus behind me that yes. I'm sorry? Do you want to speak to that? <laughs> Maybe I can answer. Uh, we can maneuver a school bus through there. Oh, we can maneuver a school bus through there. It was designed, all the turning radius was designed for the fire apparatus and school buses. Are there specific points for school bus pickup? 
determined? Yes, in the, there is a gazebo and signage right by the front and some tables uh, mm -hmm. up toward I the top. I see that. That area we thought would be convenient for a uh, school bus pickup. And they can maneuver through there and drive through and, and make that stop and pick up children. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else on this side? Any questions? Yes. No questions, but I do have a written statement later. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to open it up to the audience. Uh, again, we have 30 minutes total, three minutes per person. I, one lady, Jean McVadson, she evidently has got the Grove Lane folks together, and she is going to speak for a group of people. How many people are you speaking for? Uh, in the Grove um, Lane area, about 25. Okay. And, and we also put in petitions for uh, uh, surrounding areas as well. Okay, we're going to give you 12 minutes since you had 25 folks that might speak tonight, and then we're going to go to the next group and we'll ask for other input. Come right up and give your name. And uh, remember, we've heard a lot of this stuff already, so re repetition, repetition is probably. I, I apologize in advance. Uh, before I start, though, I, I had, uh, there are a couple of errors. Your that name, I'm please, ma'am. Who are you? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Jean McFadden, Grove Lane. Um, when I was going over the ordinance uh, package uh, for tonight, I noticed that there were two errors on that, and I asked Jamie if I could uh, address those before I started. Um, may I? Your, your time's your time. Okay. Um, in in the uh, the fourth whereas uh, states that the um, the P and Z commission recommended approval um, of of the rezoning, and that's not true. Uh, the staff did. The P and Z commission did not. Also, there was a question that I had. Um, on the ordinance as well. Uh, the eastern um, acreage uh, to the east of, of the development is labeled CL, uh, AR5, and on this that we saw tonight, it's CH, and I would just like clarification on that. So, all righty. Um, Mr. Mayor, good evening. Uh, council members, Ms. Town Manager, and all, um, PNZ voted last year uh, to not recommend this project. This year, they did the same. The town council did not have to vote on this project uh, because the developer withdrew last year and returned this year with a different version of his project. And we are still opposed. And we ask you to vote down the proposal for the Brook apartment complex of 152. If Mr. Johnson's project is approved, he will construct a complex that will set a new standard for density in Chino Valley. Uh, it will create problems where currently there are none. The town council is well aware of the entire debate, so I will speak to only a few of the issues surrounding it. Uh, landscaping has been talked and talked about, uh, but I'd like to point out that the fourth building will be in the middle three stories, and those three stories that third story will have 13 windows that will look directly down into Grove. Um, and it's going to take a while for those trees to grow to, say, 30 feet, uh, which is about where those windows are going to be. I would like I just wanted to point that out. The four-and-a-half-foot wall uh, will neither provide uh, protection or division for Grove. And um, I, want, I, I was wondering about why that changed. Um, the issue is density, however, and it always has been. Brook Apartments renewed its application this year and proposed buildings that increase the number of bedrooms from 288 to 316. That's a 10% increase. Uh, it's, he didn't pare it down. Um, we've been told over and over that all the standards have been met or in, in some aspects exceeded. Um, but my common sense tells me that there's still some issues here. Putting 300 plus people and 180 plus cars on seven acres is a concern. Um, by contrast, Grove Lane is 17 existing homes on one acre each 
and our, our total population uh, is about 50 there. On September 31st, and I am concerned about this, uh, we discovered a website uh, called BurkeApartments.com and uh, that it was soliciting potential tenants and those people who were interested in an apartment complex that was coming soon. Um, two days later, a caveat was added that the project, uh, project was only in the PAD stage of development. Um, I object to having an apartment advertised uh, without government approval uh, to build it in the first place. Children will be allowed at Brook Apartment, as, as uh, Council Member Best said. Um, where are they going to play? I'm a retired high school teacher. I know that, that bored kids are trouble, uh, and that four and a half foot wall is not going to keep them out of my neighborhood. Uh, dogs will also be allowed, uh, and there apparently is uh, a recommendation to take care of some of that. But we're talking a lot of dogs and a lot of waste and a lot of people walking around um, the development. Fire protection, I, I thank the chief for coming in and talking uh, from the Central Arizona Fire and Medical Authority. Um, that was established in, in 2015. And the apparatus, and I would I'd ask the question, the three-story ladder or snorkel or whatever it's called, um, is, is that here in Chino? Uh, I do not know. Um, if it's in Prescott Valley, that's 20, 30 minutes away. And so that is a concern that I have. Um, there are, uh, as we were talking about the construction of the roads, um, on point number six, uh, where it talks about the development, the left-hand turn lane down there at Hawks Nest Trail and Road 2 North, um, there, there doesn't seem to be a, a cost uh, to the town or who's paying for that particular. So I was wondering what, when we're talking about the construction of the roads, what is the actual cost? Is it been agreed upon? I do not know, and that is a question that I have. Um, traffic. I don't want to play a numbers game with the traffic, but my common sense tells me that Road 2 North and 89 are going to um, be uh, very congested and that there will be more accidents and that the traffic, uh, the school traffic will be heavier and there are still no sidewalks down to the school. So I worry about that. Um, I wanna talk about why I live here and why about 100 people of my neighbors who signed petitions live here. Chino Valley is growing and there's time, there's much that the town council of Chino has already envisioned, but there's more to do about how that happens. On October 3rd, the town council meeting, there were two comments that struck me as relevant to the situation that we have today. The first was by Mayor Croft, who said that Chino does not have the employment opportunities that the apartment complex calls for. We don't, but we do have a plan for Old Home Manor, which I'm very much in favor of, uh, a grant of over a million dollars has given this project a really good head start. Uh, there are plans, <coughs> visions for an RV park, light manufacturing, um, retail and entertainment, and apartments. Uh, it's a blank canvas and that can provide a hub that does not encroach on existing residences. And it will support the types of jobs that are sustainable. The second comment I heard was from Council Member Mendoza. I'm paraphrasing when I, re when I report that he said, Chino's Valley, uh, Chino Valley's zoning needs to be fixed. And it's, it's varied and it's, um, um, it has given us perhaps this situation. I agree that it needs to be fixed um, so that we can plan effectively uh, for development. And that's why we have the general plan and the strategic targets for land usage. They are, and, and may I say that the town council has relied on this for guidance uh, before, and I am grateful for that. There are four. Number one, encourage new variety of residential and compatible development in core areas for sustainable 
life choices. Two, protect existing residents in large lot neighborhoods. That would be me and the people that signed the petitions. Three, avoid proximity of incompatible land, land use. This apartment complex and our one acre custom houses are incompatible. Um, four, strive for development that fulfills the community vision while allowing flexibility and encouraging innovation. This apartment project will not offer sustainable lifestyle choices. These tenants, for the most part, will not be part of our larger uh, community. They will not work here and they will not spend their money here. They are renters and they are on their way to someplace else. We have all started that way ourselves. <coughs> we were on our way to someplace else. For a lot of us, that someplace else turned out to be Chino Valley. We all, um, are we protected by the building of 152 apartments at our back door? No, we are not. The reasons are obvious. Overcrowding, bored children, messy dogs, limited parking, and nowhere to go, no jobs to get. These will not be garden apartments, and they will not provide an easy um, pedestrian environment to parks, shopping, and entertainment. The apartment complex is incompatible with the existing area. Brook Apartments will not allow for or encourage innovation. It will block what could have been a graceful transition from what it is now to what it could be in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, next person. I see a hand back there. Come on up. You have three minutes. We have about 18 minutes left in the third. Hi, minutes. Um, Chris Four. Foley. I'm one of the adjacent landowners. And you said you had an attorney on the phone with us, town attorney? Yeah. Okay. So this question is for him or her. Um, I have repeatedly asked that my address not be used for this project. And I see tonight my address is still being used for this project. My address is 740 West Road 1 North. This development, I don't know what their address is, but if I have one more person come down my driveway to look at this property or to harass me, what can I do? I've asked the Planning and Zoning Committee last year. Our manager, please get yeah. that change. <laughs> Get it changed. Get it corrected? Thank Get you. Corrected. Get the right one. Okay. Thank you. And now I have a question for the town. The water station where all the water trucks go and pick up right there next to Walgreens, uh, pretty messy, congested. There's lots of water companies. I got my own water truck. So when the development goes in, does the town have any um, plan to maybe buy a little bit of that property so the water trucks can actually circle in and don't have to do U-turns on the road and all that stuff? Or could they consider it? I'll ask that question. Ma'am, we're not able to answer questions. Okay. There, I'm going to answer anyway. Yes, there's something. In my, we're going to update that. Thank you. Water. You can answer questions. Okay. Next. I have a question. Sure. Um, okay. My name's Yolanda Manilia. So you had a map that showed the zoning for this Brookside Apartments, M1, I think. Anyhow, how did they get that zoning on Road 2 North with all the homes in there? Like if you look at the map, like the zoning, it's like that, it's, you only have those apartments. I get nervous when I'm up here talking to people. Yeah. We but, all do when we first start doing this. <laughs> you only have that zoning there. If, can you pull that map back up? That showed the zoning of everything there. And the zoning guy's coming. <sighs> you Look, would you stop nervous. it a minute? Oh, I get nervous. I don't like talking in front of people. <laughs> Let's answer her question. Yeah. So how did that MR1, like, if you look at that zoning and everything else around it, how do you get a big old apartment complex down the street when you have all these homes. And isn't Burger, Burger King coming in? 
that bought the apartments, or not the apartments, that bought the land next to Walgreens. Someone bought the land next to Walgreens. Yes, Burger King is coming in between Walgreens and Sonic. So, like, where are their front? Where are they going to have? You can access Burger King from the highway, but that land kind of wraps around where your water. <laughs> that should not. So impact, that should not impact on that property anyway. There's. It's, I'm just saying it's going to be a lot there, because yeah. they got to have. They got to have two entrance, two. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I'd like to see the map where he's making all these changes on the road, this left-hand turn, you know, Jamie, how every, all the, I want to see how the road looks at a next meeting, you know, like, I don't want to approve anything unless I see how it's going to affect me living there and that school. Okay. And then remember, it's dark at night, very dark at night. You're going to have to light that up with that short wall. I think you need a taller wall. I think your three minutes are up. Thank okay, you very thank you. much. Next person. Come on up. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, my name is Stacy Woodsum. I live here in uh, Chino Valley on Gold Rush Way. Um, pardon my being nervous for this. Um, I know that there has been a lot of communication in regards to these apartments, and I just wanted to speak, and I don't mean to be repetitive, so I apologize up front for that. Um, but this is the first time that I've been able to express um, my opinion about the apartments. So I've lived here in Chino Valley for 10 years, and my daughter is a, a student at Heritage Middle School. And she has begged me on multiple occasions to be able to ride her bike to school. Um, and I won't let her because of the existing traffic that lives along road one, uh, one north, two north, one west. And I feel that obviously, has, as um, you so eloquent, eloquently put it, the traffic again would just increase, adding uh, not only pedestrian traffic, um, vehicular traffic. Um, I too moved to Chino Valley um, during the last recession. I chose this, we chose this town because of where it put us. You know, we could have chosen any other town, but we chose Chino and we do love it here. Um, we currently sit on two plus acres and I feel that we are probably in the minority or in the coming minority and I enjoy my room that I have, as I know a lot of people around here do. I enjoy my rural lifestyle. And I know that we do need and have you know, multiple types of housing in our community. Um, but I would ask council to consider not letting this apartment complex into into our town at least in this particular area i know we have a couple of complexes already and it sounds like one or two already that have been approved and i would just appreciate town council taking heed from from our current residents as you are our current residents as well and please consider not approving this apartment at this time thank you okay anyone else Yes, ma'am. I haven't finished yet. We have finished. You had your three minutes. Let other people talk. If at the end there's okay. time left, I'll call you back up. All right. Anybody else? Come on up. Jim Capano, Chino Valley resident. The only questions I have are, why is the town offering reimbursement to the contractors for things that are gonna be put in place? If we're approving any type of construction, development in a town, anyone who's developing should be held responsible for all the improvements, traffic, lights, city, uh, water, curb, gutter, sewer, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. 
in my opinion, keyword opinion, our money, which is the town's money spent on improvements and everything else like that, should not be offered as a carrot to developers, giving it back to them, saying, it says here, oh yeah, we'll get the town's gonna provide reimbursement agreement with the owners for uh, lots, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. My concern would be from whatever point on, all improvements in this town, as they are in other places in the state as well as other states, developers want to come in, they want to build something, developers need to pocket all the financial burden and responsibility for anything that's involved with that. Thank you very much for your time. And somebody can have my minute and a half. <laughs> Anyone else that would like to speak? You got a couple of more minutes. We'll get him too. We'll okay. give him his three minutes. Yolanda Manilia. So my question is, with my property, I'm on five acres, and I can't subdivide it because it's deed restricted two and a half acres. So are you going to allow all the property owners that have five acres, two and a half acres, to take two and a half and bring it down to that one acre? I mean, don't get greedy. <laughs> and everything, like everything in Paul and their lands, two, two acre minimum, out in Coyote Springs, two acre minimum. I like these big projects. You need to watch out where they go and what you do. And commercial should be in the commercial areas. Like I heard someone about Perkinsville Road. I don't know what's going out there, but I'll find out. But you have 16 seconds. Okay, <laughs> whatever. I'm just telling you. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thank, thank you for your input. Yeah. We appreciate it. Yes, sir. You got your three minutes. And that will be the end after your three minutes. Hi there, all. My name is Nick Salee. Uh, I live on Grove. And I am opposing the Grove apart the apartments near Grove. I plan on living at this address, specifically 523, because I was the one who wanted the house in the first place. Because we moved from Prescott Valley where we had a small acre, I think it was a quarter of an acre, to a one acre. That's a big difference to me at least. One, and then second was uh, the current zoning was much, much larger than what we currently had. Um, we drove through the street a couple times looking at multiple different <coughs> houses in multiple different areas. And one of the biggest, thing, the biggest things that stood out was there was no large buildings near it. It was, you know, small buildings, but large land. And then again, also, I like taking photos of natural environment, as I said last time, and specifically the sky, which I do like to go out on uh, large open areas of land so I can get the best pictures where there's nothing in sight. With the apartments, that wouldn't really be possible for me. That would kind of kill the dream for that. Uh, I have attended three high schools from every area from Prescott Valley to Chino Valley, not because I got kicked out, but because I wanted Letterman, uh, a Letterman jacket, and I have three different, four different letters now. And honestly, in 30 years, them trees are not gonna be tall enough. I'll still be here at that house. I'll still see the apartments. Th they're not gonna be high enough for me not to see them. So, thank you for your time. You have one minute left. Thank you for your time. All right, thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. You didn't talk to me? No, I'm not. Anyone else? I'm, I think we got one more person that can do three minutes. Okay, hearing none. Okay, our next step is I will ask for a motion to approve this item. If there is a motion and a second that motion, I will ask for a roll call vote each council member may vote and may provide a reason why they voted. Yay is to approve the zoning. Nay is to disapprove the zoning. Do I have a motion to approve? Oh, you got my turn? Mm -hmm. you, you can just stay the script so you don't have to do this. Hmm? Hang on, I'm almost there. Okay. Do I need to read all that stuff? No. Just, just the main part and, <coughs> just say, and include the steps. Okay, we'll make a motion to adopt ordinance two. 
2019-2019-819-873 zoning approximately 6.8 acres of real property from the MR1 multifamily residential one acre minimum zoning district to the MR1 PAD multifamily residential one acre minimum zoning district with a planned area development overlay with its associated development plan with the following conditions, numbers one through seven. Is there a second? I'm gonna make a second to get it on the floor for a vote. So let's start, we'd like to have a roll call vote. Ms. Lewis, we're done, we're done speaking, okay? Legal protest. What? Uh, legal, the neighbors issue? filed a legal protest. What's um, that? It means that you have to have a certain number. Uh, your legal counsel can explain it, but I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, I'm going to have it do it after we vote. We'll talk about the. We have to. Have no discussion. I have a written Any statement. Discussion. You have a discussion. I have a written statement. Okay, come on. Okay, let's just get this ball rolling. Okay, if I pause, it doesn't mean I'm done. I'll let you know when I'm done. I have heard the surrounding residents' concerns, listened to Central Yavapai Medical Authority's input, and studied the information presented to us tonight and previously. I understand the applicant is exceeding setback requirements, landscaping requirements, and parking requirements based on our UDO. However, that does not minimize the density as stated intent, it merely makes it more palatable. The staff report states this development would include 287 parking stalls. The staff report also states that the possible impact would be 1,011 average daily trips with an average of 505.5 trips between 6 to 9 a.m. and 3 to 7 p.m. The west side of Road 2 North is heavily used during these specific times to reach arterial roads going to and from work, the water filling station, and most importantly to me, Del Rio Elementary and Heritage Middle School. Today, traffic was backed up from the intersection of Road 2 North and Road 1 West at 7.25 a.m. These time periods stated are mostly used for parent drop-off pickup, bus transportation to and from school, activities, sports, etc. Road 2 North is already in need of widening, in my opinion, to accommodate existing traffic, not including an estimated 1,011 additional daily trips. The staff report states number eight, intersection improvements at Road 2 North in accordance with the revised traffic study shall be required final design to be approved by the town engineer. This only addresses the intersection that is already congested with frequent accidents. <coughs> this does not address any sort of widening of road to north as only the driveway and not the development itself is impacted. Private residents on road to north will be impacted with the need for widening the road. Road one west is not mentioned, although it will be heavily used as well. Specifically, this parcel is not in line with the general plan as highlighted on the map. It abuts commercial multifamily on the southeast corner and sits within med medium density residential and the potential community core. I understand the applicant, Chris Fergus, and the owners of record, Brook Assisted Living, LLC, has gone through great efforts to increase density from the existing approved 99 dwellings by adding 16 three-bedroom units and 16 four-bedroom units. My only presumption is this project is no longer aimed to be an assisted living community. Noteworthy, the Brook Apartments are being advertised online before we have taken this vote. In regards to 16 three-bedrooms and 16 four-bedroom apartments, according to staff report, staff advised the developer against play areas for children to play due to possibility liability concerns, due to possible liability concerns. I do not believe that is within the scope or service or specialty of staff. Also noteworthy, the applicant has stated that these apartments will allow dogs, unsure of how many at this time, but will not be providing an outside area for dog walking. Instead, recommended using the concrete trail and water retention basin area. Zoning is not about dogs, however, common decency should, be, should extend to accommodate children and animals for adequate space if they are now allowed. I understand the town would benefit from the proposed water and sewer extension revenue, However, my conscience for our community outweighs the possible benefit if this is approved and the applicant were to move forward. The Planning and Zoning Commission voted three, four to three to deny this rezone. I am not in favor of overriding Planning and Zoning Commissioner's vote based on staff recommendations. 
They serve our community with the purpose of reviewing such requests diligently and often spend many more hours regarding these projects to ensure developing standards and compliance with the UDO. I will be voting no to rezone to a multifamily residential with the planned area development overlay to accommodate 152 units. This location specifically is my main concern. I'm done. Thank you very much. So we have one nay. Corey, one let's nay. just ro run across and discuss and then see how are you going to vote. I think this is a great opportunity for everybody to learn when they go to buy a piece of property, they need to look and see what is surrounding and what other people's property rights are, not just the one that you're looking at. Um, this property owner does have a use by right for his property, and that is for a, a unit to build up to 99 units. Um, this was established by the, the town. Uh, I believe that even within that 99 units, three story is still perfectly uh, legal for him to, to do that. So um, basically shame on everyone that's, you know, didn't look and do their homework better before they bought the properties. Um, but with that being said, I do believe that going from 99 to 152 units is excessive and I'm, I'm gonna vote to, to stick to the stound established limit. So I will also have a nay vote. Okay. I have problems with the uh, lack of concern for children and for pets, and my vote will be nay. You. I also am going to vote nay. Um, I think 99 units is plenty. I believe based on everything I've read and heard from the people, which my theory is I represent the input, is also a nay. And I, because of the density and the three stories, my vote is nay. The motion fails. Motion to adjourn. We're, we're I'd address. like to make a motion to adjourn. Wait, what? Do we have oh. to address the executive session? No, we have no executive session. Okay. I'll second seated. his motion. Second it. Motion is second to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 We're adjourned.